Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid, and give us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask, except with the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Today's gospel lesson always reminds me of my first parish assignment at the time of the most divisive state of God's church has ever suffered in modern times. Now, I have never known wealth, and so I cannot honestly say that I can truly empathize with the very wealthy. But it seemed that during that first year, every time it was my Sunday to preach, the gospel lesson always dealt with the wealthy the young rich man, the man who built larger barns rather than share his harvest, the difficulty of the rich to enter heaven, and so forth and so on. And oh, how many times I would question, Lord, why me? Jesus always told parables that people could relate to. In today's gospel reading, Jesus tells the parable of the wicked tendons to a people who indeed experienced the practice of absent landowners. First century Palestine was by this time occupied territory where there were many large estates owned by foreigners who leased their land to tenants for a portion of the annual produce. Economic depression coupled with na nationalistic spirit often led to withholding rent from the absentee landlords. This, on occasion, brought violence and sometimes murder. As Jesus was speaking to the chief priests and the Pharisees, they knew that the Jewish nation was often referred to as the vineyard of the Lord. They knew that the owner was God, and the tenants had to be the wicked leaders in Israel, who had a chronic propensity to kind of bite the hand that fed them the ones who chastised and called Amos and exiled him for speaking the unpopular word of the Lord to the people, the people who beat up Jeremiah, arrested him, put him in stocks, and tossed him into a cistern to starve and die, all for proclaiming the will of the Lord. How easy it was for them to cross that line for understanding stewardship and assuming ownership. It's just as easy for us today. We too confuse stewardship with ownership of that which isn't ours. We keep referring to the vineyard, the church as our vineyard, our church. When did we die for her? How does that beautiful hymn of ours go? From heaven he came and sought her to be his holy bride. With his own blood he bought her and for her life he died. When and why did the vineyard, the church, entrusted to us begin to yield sour grapes? Was it when we began to assume ownership of tablets, table, and temple? Was it when we began to assume ownership of the tablets, forgetting that they were given by God not to lord over others, but to be lovingly shared and lovingly taught to others by word and deed? Was it when we attempted to rewrite the tablets, om omitting the first two greatest commandments, thou shalt love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and the second is like unto it, thou shalt love your neighbor as yourself? Maybe that's the problem. We have such a hard time truly believing that God loves us. And we just can't imagine God loving the ones we don't like, those who make us uncomfortable. We just can't believe that God loves them too. Was it when we began to assume ownership of the table, forgetting that God's table is abundant with plenty for everyone especially us sinners? Was it when we began to hedge it off, 
hoarding it to ourselves, forgetting that even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table? Was it when we began to assume ownership of the temple, God's church, seizing her, locking her, and guarding her against certain individuals, and in the name of being righteous, making her righteousness our idol, our God? How easy to confuse stewardship with ownership. Perhaps because ownership feeds our hidden desire for power, and when the fruits of the vineyard began to tantalize us, we just can't resist the temptation to keep it all for ourselves, and we refuse to give the owner his fair share. When will we realize that our Lord never keeps the portion we lovingly give back? Our Lord takes it, blesses it, and gives it right back to us. And aren't we lucky that our Lord gives back unconditionally? I would hate to think that our Lord gives back as begrudgingly as sometimes we give. After all, we are to care for God's people and God's environment, using our resources wisely. And oh, what a day of rejoicing when we can truly say, Lord, we cared for your world and your sheep and all have been fed, and no one hungers. Whom has God sent, and whom have we killed or beaten? Oh, our first words will be, we have never done that. Well, we may not have pulled the trigger, and we may not have stabbed or raised a club, but by our silence and our lack of support, we have killed bills and laws that would have changed the injustice of our system because it would have meant losing a little bit of our own status and power. How many leaders who revolutionized our thinking and turned things upside down died at the hands of those who were threatened by their presence and their leadership? Just like the priests and the Pharisees, we know the answer. And like them, many times, for fear of the crowds, we remain silent. But the God who was and will ever be will keep sending us messengers until the ears and eyes of our hearts are open to receive them. For that is the never-ending, everlasting, persistent love that our God has for us, the tenants of his creation. And that is the daily tension in which we live. That place where things were created, the way they were supposed to have been created, lovingly, patiently, and the way things turned out, the way things are today. And God was and is and will be in that space between the way things were created to be and the way things are. And that is why we are told to pray daily. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And that is why we continue to proclaim, all things come from you, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee.